what are blockchains? Let's apply my fondness of shoe shopping to explain. Firstly, to understand blockchain, you need to understand the difference between centralized and decentralized networks. For example, I'm doing some online shoe shopping and pouring over the boots, then spot sparkly heels and a funky pair of sneakers. I spot a pair that I love and they've got my size. Woo! Quickly, I add them to cart, enter my delivery details and give my credit card number. Submit. Ah. As I watch the screen tell me that my data is being verified, I drift off into happy shoe land. Whilst I'm there, my data is sent to a centralised network, an intermediary, like a bank that verifies that my credit card is valid and authorises my transaction. The screen tells me I have a receipt number and congratulates me on my purchase. Let's see how blockchains are different. Blockchains use decentralised networks. I'm shopping for shoes again because I'm procrastinating from studying right now. I find a cool pair on sale and then add them to my cart and press the buy now button. While I'm thinking about what outfits will complement my new shoes, my computer is busy sending data into a decentralised network, a blockchain. My computer sends my transaction data such as the time, date and amount spent on the shoes, plus information about me and the company that I've bought the shoes from. My shoe transaction is then distributed through millions of other computers in a peer-to-peer -peer decentralized network. In this network, there are nodes. The nodes act as validators. Think of a validator as a person holding a checklist, steadily checking that my transaction is legitimate and meets the blockchain rules. There are thousands of validators in a peer-to-peer -peer network. Now picture the same person with a checklist is wearing go fast running shoes. They now race against thousands of their peers to be the first to validate my shoe transaction. The validator who wins the race gets to create a new block. Woohoo! They also need to create a digital signature for the block. To create a digital signature, the validator must complete a complex mass calculation that transforms the block data into a cryptographic hash. Think of a hash as a unique computer code. Once the network accepts the hash, the block can then join the blockchain. Phew! All that effort in creating a block can take merely minutes or seconds, making it a fast and efficient way to validate a transaction. Did you notice that there was no one intermediary controlling the validation of data? Instead, thousands or more validators in the network work to be the fastest to validate the data. Once a block containing my shoe transaction has joined the blockchain, it is a permanent record that cannot be easily changed. As we have established, a cryptographic hash is included in a block, along with its relevant transaction records. It's important to note that each block also contains the hash from the previous block. This makes it difficult for anyone to alter or delete information from a block once it is in a blockchain, particularly hackers. So why use blockchains over centralised networks? From an accounting perspective, because blockchains cannot be changed, they have the potential to provide accurate and transparent records in a permanent form. Centralised networks are vulnerable to hacking, data corruption and the risk that humans make mistakes. They are also reliant on one network. To recap, blockchains are a new method of record keeping which validates data from many sources on a peer-to-peer -peer network. It doesn't rely on one intermediary to validate the data. Blockchains are public, so anyone can view the data. Once a block is added into a blockchain, it cannot be altered, therefore making the information in the block accurate and permanent. Each block also contains the unique cryptographic hash code from the previous block, therefore providing data security. The goal of blockchain is that digital information can be recorded and distributed, but not edited.